Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. Hey, the place to be is the Gary Sportsman's Club, which is actually located in Crown Point, Indiana, home of the Goodfella Coin Club meetings. Fourth Friday of every month. Hey, let's learn about pattern coins. T. All right, Russ, I see you have your assistant here. Uh, do you want to make an introduction? I do, sure. This is my uh, this is my daughter, Sherry. She's 10. Um, you might have even seen her occasionally if you've ever been to any of the shows or any of the coin club meetings. She uh, comes around and helps out and plays with me and gets to hang out. She was on uh, the very last uh, coin show uh, video that we made together. Barely. At the last second, she darted behind you, and I kept that in there. <laughs> Uh, but now the whole world gets to meet little Sherry, who is uh, nice enough to join her dad at our coin club meetings and is uh, very well behaved and patient uh, as we talk about the coins that we love. And uh, and uh, tell you what, a big part of our coin club is education and learning. And uh, every time I come, you're one of the key players here. You teach the club members about uh, various aspects of numismatics and uh, this week you didn't disappoint my friend uh, l go ahead and uh, tell everybody what you brought there sure so um, we have three really important pieces um, that came into the shop um, my intent was to bring all three but unfortunately uh, we sold one right before I left for the day um, so I only have two but I do have high quality images of the third so you'll get to see all of those. Um, what I've brought are two pattern coins. A pattern coin is basically a coin that for some reason is experimental. It could be um, trying out a new design. It could be trying out a new technique in striking the coin. It could be a new metal composition of the coin. Um, but the key part here is it's experimental to some degree. Um, and they're very low mintages, generally under 50. Um, so what I and they they fall into three categories and I have examples of all three. So the first one, which unfortunately I don't have with me, but um, you should be seeing a high quality image of it probably right about now, is an 1863 ten dollar gold piece. Um, it's made out of copper, and what's different about it is it's a true pattern coin. So they're changing the design. In the 1860s during the Civil War, um, we're experimenting with the motto "In God We Trust." Um, and it first appears in 1864 on the two-cent piece. Before that, they're trying to figure out what the motto on coins is going to be. Um, but, you know, it's our official motto is E Pluribus Unum, for many one in Latin. Um, but we also have In God We Trust. This comes from the Civil War, and it comes really from a time when a lot more people are finding religion and finding comfort in religion from the horrors of the Civil War. Um, and so... On the back of this coin, instead of in God we trust, we actually have God our trust. Um, so we're experimenting with the motto. We're not sure what it's going to be yet. Mm -hmm. So that's a true pattern coin. It's a new design. It's a new piece of the design. Um, the next piece I have is an 1865 $10 gold piece. And this is what we call a transitional pattern. Um, so at this point, we have figured out what the motto is going to be. It's going to be In God We Trust. Mm -hmm. um, and that starts appearing on all coinage in 1866. Can I see that one? Sure. So that starts appearing on all coinage in 1866. Um, a transitional pattern is a, a piece that is dated a year before the new design. So this is dated 1865, but it has In God We Trust on the back. Um, it's struck out of copper in a proof finish. Generally, patterns you'll see are struck in metals that aren't, you know, their, their composition. So for example, this is supposed to be a $10 gold piece, but it's struck in copper. Right. And copper is cheaper. You know, they're playing with the design. They're seeing how it's going to strike. They're seeing what they have to do to the dies to make it work. So it makes sense to strike it out of something that isn't as rare and precious. Um, if I remember right, the mintage on this guy is something between 16 and 18. Um, not 1,000. Yes, not 1,000, not 100. 16 or 18 pieces. Period. Period. <laughs> um, and what's really cool about this piece, too, is who owned it at one point. Mm -hmm. 
this comes out of um, this is an uh, an ex Harry Bass coin. Harry Bass was a, a Texas oil man who put together an incredible collection. Basically, put together the most extensive collection of early gold and of um, pattern coins. And his collection has resided in the A and A Museum for the past 20 years wow. in Colorado Springs. Okay. Just a few months ago, it was announced that the Harry Bass Foundation was retaking possession of those coins, getting and they were all raw, getting them slabbed by PCGS, and now Heritage Auction Galleries out of Dallas, Texas, has those coins and will be selling those coins. Okay. So that collection is now going to be scattered to the winds. This was one of the more common pieces, mm -hmm. so it wasn't included in the ANA collection. Okay. So, but this was a Harry Bass coin. Is that from his family's estate? That Correct. Just trickled yeah. out into yep. the yeah. Coin so he actually world. yep, and then the rest of his collection he donated. Okay. Basically, he they, it belongs to his foundation, and his foundation put it on display for 20 years in the ANA museum. Um, so. This is a really cool piece because it, it belonged to a really important collection. Um, now, are, is there a big uh, community of uh, collectors for this type of coin? Absolutely. Okay. Um, it, it's another subspecialty of, of collecting. The, the only problem with patterns is they're generally very expensive. Um, this particular coin, we have a price tag of about 13000 on. Wow. Um, so they generally get very expensive because, again, there's only, you know, Generally, you have under 50 pieces made, and a lot of times it's really between 10 and 20 pieces. Right. So most of them, most of those survive because you know they didn't circulate. They were meant to be test pieces. A lot of times they were given to people as like mementos. Uh -huh. So most of them survive. Um, so while they are rare, they're available. You know, people know where they are. Okay. Um, and the last piece that I brought is kind of the last flavor of pattern. It's called a trial piece. Let's take a look at that. Um, this one is really cool because it's actually struck in aluminum. Um, it is the exact same design as a regular 1868 $10 gold piece. It's actually struck from the same dies that would be it would be struck from. It's just struck in a different metal. And in this case, aluminum. And in the 1860s, aluminum is more valuable than gold. It's a very, very valuable metal. They haven't figured out the refining techniques yet to make it cheap. That doesn't come around, you know, until the latter half of the 19th century. It's a cameo coin, so it's it's very lustrous, it's very reflective. Um, what's cool about these is kind of why they were made. A lot of times they were made for important people, um, serotypically at the mint. Uh -huh. um, you know, on the DL, huh? uh, kind of on on the down low. You know, some really important guy says, "Hey, I want something unique," uh -huh. and the mint director says, "Oh, I think we can swing something for you." <laughs> um, other times, they were struck to out of you know, a metal that was worth more than gold. At this point, yes. Yeah. Generally, you'll see them a lot in copper. Okay. Um, and a lot of times, you know, sometimes they're done to test the dies uh -huh. for that year to see if you know they're going to strike right. You know, uh -huh. make sure they're hardened or things like that. But this piece particularly was probably made for somebody. Um, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, but I know the mintage is under 20. I think this one has a mintage of 16. Wow. Um, What's the price tag on that? Uh, so this guy I have priced at 15,000. Okay. Um, so again, you know, they're, they're expensive, they're rare, um, and you just don't see them a lot because, you know, they're, they didn't make a lot of them and they were never really meant to be out there. Right. So. Well, there's somebody out there in the world right now that needs that coin. Absolutely. In their collection. Absolutely. And uh, how cool is that that they came to Harlan J. Burke in Chicago? Yep. They made their way to the Goodfellows Coin Club in Crown Point. And now they're heading back to Chicago and Lord knows where they'll wind up. Yep. They'll end up in the showcase, you know, for a little while. And I'm sure that within the next week or so, um, you know, they'll end up in somebody else's collection. And, you know... Hopefully someday I get to I get to play with them again. <laughs> now speaking of coin clubs, uh, there is a coin show coming up uh, put on by the Calumet Coin Club that we're both a part of as well. Oldest club in Indiana, by the way. The coin show is going to be October 29th at St. Matthias here in Crown Point. Right. Um, it's a great little show. I mean, you're going to look at probably about 25 to 30 dealers. Um, yours truly will be there. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll have a bunch of my inventory up from Chicago. Uh-huh. Um, 
and you know we've got door prizes we've got stuff for kids we've got all kinds of stuff it's a great show if you've never been to a coin show it's a great first show to go to yeah um and there is a big push to get kids there absolutely uh, for this particular show yeah absolutely we're always trying to get more more young people into collecting Mm -hmm. um that's a big initiative we have going on right now in both of our clubs here in northwest indiana um so you know it's if you're if you're even a little bit curious if you follow t's channel at all and you're in the area i really really recommend you coming up absolutely and we would love to see more younger people into coin collecting our our clubs both of them are uh, full of very knowledgeable senior citizens uh but as they mentioned just as very evening they're not going to be around forever and we don't want coin collecting to go the way of stamp collecting and just kind of die out we love the the treasures that we love and uh, hold so dear to our hearts to be passed down to other people who care about them as much as we do absolutely know? so hey russ thanks for the time sherry thank you so much uh, we'll see you at the next coin club meeting and uh, then later on at the show kiddo all right thanks guys thanks steve